Let's settle ourselves and begin with our welcome to country from Dr. Yao Mimbira. And to introduce him, his longtime friend and academic associate, Ian Coglin, who with his wife, Jill, runs two local farms on holistic principles. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, um, Rebecca. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Yao Mimbira, who is kindly known as, uh, as Yao. I've known Yao for, for many years as a friend and as a colleague at Charles Sturt University, where Yao graduated with honours and then went on to achieve a PhD, wherein he looked at the cultural heritage of um, his Wiradjuri people. Yao is a, uh, an elder of Wiradjuri, and um, <coughs> the Wiradjuri people have walked upon these lands for tens of thousands of years, so we're, we're newcomers to this, to this country that they've, they've walked upon for so long. The country that they walked upon, they walked upon softly, they nourished, it was rich in woodlands, forests, grasslands, it teemed with wildlife, both below the ground and above the ground. So it was a country which had all the things which I guess we aspire to, to have. The Raji people uh, geographically spanned north to Dubbo uh, and their language, south to Benalla and Shepparton, and east to, um, to Bathurst, where they first encountered white explorers and, and white settlers. Uh, they, did, they did nourish the land and um, <coughs> we're, we're the beneficiaries of that nourishment. Uh, knowing Yale at, at university, um, Yale was often seen talking to people in a timeless sort of fashion and he gave us the greatest gift of all which is, which is time and if we can make time timeless it's all the more richer. So with those few notes I would like to welcome uh, Yale and thank him for being with us here today. Thank you Yale. Morning, everyone. There's more than three people out there, isn't there? Uh, morning, everyone. Morning. Yeah, that's a lot better, isn't it? Yeah. Um, my name's Yal Mambira. Um, I'm a representative of um, the Radjuri Council of Elders and um, the Radjuri uh, Nation. And on behalf of the Radjuri Council of Elders, Wambanagu, Radjuri Nurumbung, welcome to Radjuri Country. Um, I apologise for the way that I'm dressed. I'm in the middle of an archaeological survey at the bottom of the Hume Weir wall. And um, so when I, it'll be a short talk that I give you because um, I've got to get back to work. Um, <laughs> my little chat with you today is about an area um, of land east of Albury known as Mungabaruna Reserve. Um, in the year 2000, I came to Albury from Sydney in 1996 as a distance education student um, for environmental sciences. And I became a lecturer for Charles Sturt University 12 months after I started uni. And um, in environmental science has got me interested in looking after country. Um, so the area east of Albury known as Mungabaruna Reserve um, was an area very special to uh, Wiradjuri peoples. And after doing a little bit of research, I come across some diaries by Human Hovel uh, who said that Mungabaruna looked like an English country garden. It was that well looked after. Um, and, but it had deteriorated. So I decided to do something about it in the year 2000 and um, I wanted to revegetate and re rehabilitate um, this area of land to get it back to something like human hovel I described. Um, the consultation processes um, were a little bit over the top of my head. I, I'd done, I think, about five to 8,000 um, pamphlets to let community people know what it is that we were going to do out there um, that was part of the consultation processes. Um, because we were going to set fire to country and we wanted everybody to know that, you know, it wasn't a bushfire, it was us. 
starting it. And um, I invited people to participate in this project. Um, Aubrey City Council at the time were adjusting the area out to cattle and the lagoons out there, the wetlands out there were just completely black. Um, you couldn't see anything in the water. Um, the huge amount of scotch thistles and introduced species of weeds and everything that were out there was just absolutely terrible. Um, so I approached Torby City Council and asked them to take um, the cattle off and they wouldn't do it. And so I approached the National Heritage Trust for some funding, number one for the, um, the plants that I wanted to put out there, but number two to build a fence um, so that um, when we planted, the cows couldn't get in there and eat all the plants. Um, it was, that was in the year 2000 and we had a big flood. Now I had the fence up. Um, prior to the flooding, um, I, I ended up with about four people out of the five to 8,000 leaflets that I dropped in ladder boxes come out to give me a hand. About four. And um, I went out there, I used to go out there after uni and check on the fence and everything, and then I'd come back in the morning before I went to uni, I'd go out to Mungavaruna Reserve and check on the fence. And every time that I went out there, somebody had come along and snipped, off, snipped up all the tie wire that was holding the fence up. And they were getting ready to take the whole fence away. So before I could go home or before I could go to work, I had to repair the fence. I went out there one day and there was 35 metres of fence missing. I found the 35 metres of fence in the Murray River and I had to drag that out and put it back up again. I went out the next day and they'd stolen the gate. So now that we couldn't stop the cattle from getting in there. So I approached Storby City Council and they still um, didn't want to take the cattle off. When the floods came through, they pushed all the debris up against the fence and the fence was laying over on the ground and I approached Albury City Council again, and to their credit this time they said, yeah, we'll take the cattle off um, so I could take the fence down. I invited um, schools um, to bring school children along to help with the planting process, and I was told in no uncertain terms that um, I wasn't give, to give them red cordial. Um, <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. They said, under no circumstances, give them red cordial. Um, I think on day one we went through about six litres of red cordial. Uh, and I tell you what, little kids, they can plant really fast when they've got red cordial. Uh, uh, we had approximately, we, we planted approximately 11,400, I think, um, native um, plants and wetland species and um, river red gums, etc. But what I didn't know, and I didn't ask anybody, and I should have, and this is what I'm trying to get at here, um, I didn't ask them what the floodwaters were going to do when they receded, what was going to grow back. Um, and we'd already gone through and done the burn so that we could have an area where we could plant. Um, I didn't realise just how quick river red gums grow. Um, we ended up with approximately five to 10,000 regrowth river red gums. And you couldn't walk through them, they were that thick, that close together. Um, in the end, though, um, I had 500 school children come out. It cost me a fortune in red cordial. And <laughs> 500 school kids come out and planted trees out there. And it was absolutely brilliant. And I promised each and every one of those um, school children that um, if they put a plant in the ground, their name would go up on a plaque. And so I had a plaque made up and I had 500 school children's names on it. And while we were doing all of this, signs were being stolen. Um, the signs that we'd put up informing the local community of what it was that we were doing and, and everything like that and contact numbers of people. Um, people were stealing the signs. They stole the picnic tables. Um, they, Four-wheel drive people were coming in and driving all over the place. Somebody stole the sign with the 500 school children's names on it. 
And um, we saw, well, we don't know where it is. It's, it's gone now. But the reason that I put those names on there was so that those children could grab mum and dad or grab um, uncle and auntie or grandma and grandpa and come down and say, I planted these trees. But um, there's no, no sign. It's gone. I went out there the other day. Mungabaruna Reserve has now been designated um, an Aboriginal place. And we now have a working group in place um, that consists of um, Wiradjuri elders and young people. And we are now going to rehabilitate and uh, revegetate the area um, once more. And we're working on the terms of reference at the moment. But the reason that I tell you this story, my friends, is because um, there's three things here. There's the consultation processes. I didn't consult wide enough and I didn't consult with the appropriate people at all times, and I should have. Um, there's also um, the planting, seed planting. When, when you sit down and, and, and consult with somebody and you listen to what they are, uh, what they've got to say, um, they're planting little seeds. But how you nurture those seeds is entirely up to you. They may tell you something and you consult with, you know, 10, 15 people. They've all got a different slant on things. And what they tell you then it becomes up to you how you do it. Um, so that's my message, consultation, planting seeds and how you nurture those seeds. Um, okay. On behalf of um, the Radjuri Council of Elders and the local... Wiradjuri community and um, Nanganagu, Kare Binal Billas, Kare Binal Billas, Nanganagu. That means look after the land and the rivers, and the land and the rivers will look after you. Thank you very much.